We now have precise measurements of Pluto's size, about 2,370 kilometers across, or roughly 1,473 miles. This discovery surprised us by revealing a higher ice content than we previously thought, challenging our earlier assumptions. Before, we only knew it was a cold place with a polar region and a thin atmosphere, but now we've seen pictures of craters, deep valleys, mysterious marks, polar ice, and intricate dark patterns. It's been a remarkable transformation in our understanding, leaving us to wonder, as Alan Stern did, who could have expected all this? The New Horizons spacecraft embarked on an incredible journey that led to its arrival at Pluto in 2015, after traveling for nine years and covering three billion miles. This voyage made history as the farthest encounter with a planet or dwarf planet in human history captivating our imaginations with each new image and discovery. Our solar system is incredibly large. While our home, Earth, orbits the Sun at about 93 million miles away, the farthest planet, Neptune, is 30 times farther. Such vast distances and the limitations of rocket technology mean it can take a long time to reach the outer parts of our solar system. However, in the early days of space exploration, we found a way to speed things up by using a clever trick called gravitational assistance. This helped us get to far off places faster, and New Horizons' mission to Pluto is a great example of how it works. To reach Pluto, New Horizons used some smart strategies to go faster and save fuel. First, it had a powerful rocket, the Atlas V551, that shot it into space at a record-breaking speed of more than 36,000 miles per hour. Then it used a boost from Jupiter's gravity, which added another 9,000 miles per hour to its speed and shaved three years off its journey. It took the most direct path to Pluto, avoiding unnecessary detours or orbits around other planets, saving both time and energy. Instead of slowing down or stopping at Pluto, New Horizons flew past it at an incredible speed of about 31,000 miles per hour while taking important pictures and data. By using these creative methods, New Horizons finally reached Pluto in 2015 after traveling for nine years and covering three billion miles. In just three minutes, the spacecraft flew across the width of Pluto, sending back amazing images and data that revealed the intricate and diverse features of the dwarf planet. This mission was a big deal because it was the first and only time we explored Pluto and its moons, making it the farthest planetary visit in human history. Of course, this journey came with its fair share of challenges. New Horizons had to navigate at high speeds over vast distances and time its flyby just right, all while running on limited power, communication, and data storage. Despite these difficulties, New Horizons succeeded and collected and sent back valuable scientific data and pictures of Pluto and its surroundings thanks to its advanced instruments and cameras. On the big day, NASA's New Horizons probe got incredibly close to Pluto, passing within just 7,800 miles of the dwarf planet's surface. And now, NASA is excited to share the very first high-quality pictures taken during this incredible flyby. Pluto, the enigmatic dwarf planet, unveiled its mysteries, but it came with a cosmic challenge. New Horizons, on its mission to discover the secrets of this distant world, faced a unique problem. It couldn't send data while taking pictures, and a long four-and-a-half-hour gap separated the spacecraft from Earth. NASA didn't officially make contact with the probe until Tuesday afternoon, and data transfer began at 5.50 a.m. Eastern Time on Wednesday. But patience paid off as a visual treat awaited. NASA shared a photo taken 16 hours before the Pluto flyby, giving us a taste of what was to come. Yet the real marvel was the first high-quality images captured by New Horizons. One of the most surprising findings was the absence of crater scars on Pluto's surface. Instead, the picture showed a youthful, icy mountain range reaching heights of up to 11,000 feet, resembling the Grand Canadian Rockies. This suggests ongoing geological activity on Pluto, which makes us wonder about the forces driving such events on icy worlds, as noted by John Spencer, the deputy team leader of the GGI at the Southwest Research Institute in Boulder, Colorado. In Pluto's silhouette, its nitrogen-rich atmosphere took center stage, wrapped in hazy layers. The images revealed atmospheric rays decorating the dawn and dusk skies, 
along with the uneven contours etched by Pluto's surface features. Essentially, we got a twilight view of Plutonian valleys, mountains and craters. The final images sent by New Horizons left us in awe. They portrayed a world far more diverse and intricate than we could have ever imagined, with a rich tapestry of geological, atmospheric and orbital features. Some of the most surprising and remarkable findings included puzzling dark spots. Pluto's equator has four mysterious dark spots, each covering hundreds of miles and having unique shapes and textures. These features are thought to be the result of how sunlight interacts with methane ice on Pluto's surface. Sputnik Planitia Near Pluto's south pole, there's an area called Sputnik Planitia, with a jumbled and chaotic landscape. It's like a big basin filled with flowing nitrogen gas, creating fascinating polygon patterns and ridges. This region is where Pluto's thin atmosphere comes from as the nitrogen ice turns into gas and goes into space. Wind-shaped dunes On Pluto's surface, near the edge of Sputnik Planitia and the darker parts, you can see linear features that look like wind-shaped dunes. They're made of tiny grains of methane ice and were shaped by Pluto's gentle winds. These are the first dunes ever discovered in a frozen world. The Pluto Charon duo. New Horizons took a stunning picture of Pluto and its biggest moon, Charon, from about 3.7 million miles away. In the image, you can see how different the two worlds are. Pluto has vibrant colors and diversity, while Charon is a gray crater covered place. You can also spot Pluto's thin blue haze of an atmosphere around its edge. Pluto has a group of small and irregular moons, including Charon, Nix, Hydra, Kerberos, and Styx. Charon, the biggest and closest moon, is nearly half the size of Pluto and has a dark red spot at its pole, probably from stuff that moved from Pluto. Nix and Hydra, the next largest moons, have shiny surfaces that suggest they might have water ice. Kerberos and Styx, the smallest and faintest moons, are irregularly shaped and have wonky orbits likely formed from stuff that came from a collision between Pluto and another space object way back when. Scientists have shared early insights into Pluto's moons, and they've even given Charon's dark spot the cute nickname Mordor. As we enjoy these super clear images, it's cool to know that the heart on Pluto will be informally named after the person who found Pluto, Clyde Tombaugh. The wide variety of Pluto's surface remains a fascinating puzzle, and we still don't know exactly how it all happened. In the next year, when we go through all the data that New Horizons sent back, we'll probably find some important clues. Even though the data comes in pretty slowly, at 2,000 bits per second, the excitement and the discoveries that keep coming are genuinely one of a kind. It's going to take around 16 months to download all the information from New Horizons, so there's a whole lot more to learn about Pluto's mysterious world. Pluto's solitary journey, exploring the hurdles. The images we have of Pluto today are the last snapshots we may see for a while. It's not because we lack curiosity or interest, but exploring Pluto poses several tough challenges, making it a low priority for future missions. The challenges of studying Pluto can be summed up like this. Pluto's path around the Sun is quite far from Earth, around 40 times farther. Its oval-shaped and tilted orbit takes 248 years to complete. This means there are times when Pluto gets closer to the Sun than Neptune, and times when it ventures farther into the Kuiper Belt. This tricky orbit makes planning and carrying out missions harder, affecting how the spacecraft can communicate, get power, and send data and pictures. Pluto is not very big, only about two-thirds of the size of Earth's moon. Plus, it doesn't reflect much light, low albedo, and it's not very bright. This makes Pluto hard to see without powerful telescopes and cameras. It also means we can't get super detailed images. Pluto is not high on the list of places to explore in space, it's not a major planet, and it doesn't seem like a place where life could exist. Also, it doesn't have any valuable resources. Exploring Pluto takes a lot of money, a big, complex spacecraft, a long mission, and a lot of time. A great example is the New Horizons mission, which cost around $700 million and took 15 years from planning to completion. New Horizons has moved beyond Pluto and is now exploring the Kuiper Belt, an area with icy objects. It won't come back to the inner part of the solar system, so visiting Pluto again is out of the question. 
The spacecraft, after visiting one Kuiper Belt object in 2019, will keep working until the mid-2030s, after which it will run out of power and can't communicate anymore. Then it will keep drifting farther from the Sun and Pluto into interstellar space. These challenges show just how tough it is to explore Pluto. Despite being a fascinating mystery, we might not be able to return and discover more of its secrets in the near future. If you like this video, click on the screen to watch other videos like this one. Remember to like, subscribe and click on the notification bell to get notified when we post a new video.